Hey guys, Dan, Warpaint JKU. Today I'm going to show you guys how to store a tire, pretty large, 40 by 1350, inside the back of your JKU and still have storage space for your tools and other things that you're going to want out on the trail. Check it out. These are the tools that I store in the back of my Jeep when I'm off-roading at the rock parks. Now, I also have a 10-inch uh, powered Memphis subwoofer in the back as well that's installed flush up against the rear seat. It's real easy to keep all this stuff in the back of the Jeep with that 40-inch tire. And I find that the 40-inch tire also helps keep this stuff secure and doesn't restrict my access to removing those tools afterwards. Now I'll go over the tools that I bring with me on the trail in another video, but here I pretty much have everything that I would need to bail me out of 90% of the situations that you'll commonly come across on a trail, and even maybe some of the rare ones. Now here we are with the inside of the wheel, okay, facing away from my body. I want it done like this because I want the outside of the wheel facing the back of the Jeep, right? So anybody behind me, anybody gets a view, they actually see the outside of the wheel. Just personal preference. Some people don't care. I want it to look like it belongs there, like it's nice, like it fits, not like it was an afterthought. So you're going to see all these holes around the inside of your wheel, and you're going to see your center bore, bore hole as well. Now again, depending upon the axles you have, depending upon the wheel you have, these holes are all going to be different sizes. Some people like to put this right in their waist, okay, and then they bend down and they grab these holes in the wheel. Those are too small for me to grab onto, so I actually grab the center bore and I use my waist and my legs and back as leverage to lift the bottom edge of the tire up and rest it on the bump. Okay, once I have this in my waist, I'm gonna reach into that center bore hole like I just talked about, lift the tire up and put the bottom edge on the rear bumper, stand it up. So, this tire fits in here, like I just displayed. It's got a tiny bit of room on each side, not that big of a deal. If you had a smaller tire, it would fit in here even easier. You'd be able to lift it in here even easier. But obviously, this is a pretty big tire. It's pretty heavy. Now, what we're going to do is very gently, we are just going to lean it backwards and rest the back side of the tire on the rear seat between the two headrests. So, you know, as I lean it, I can hear it, there's, there's something stopping it. That's going to be my, my dome light on that rear bar that goes across behind the uh, rear seat. So I just have to scoot the bottom part of the tire a little closer to the tailgate to be able to drop it in there and clear that. Obviously, if you had a 37 or a 35, that wouldn't be an issue. All right, guys, so I've taken my rear seat on the passenger side because it is one of these 60-40 folding rear seats. You actually have a very large portion that will fold forward. You pop it up with this handle in the back, lay the seat forward. I get even more room out of it if I slide the front seat a little bit farther forward, and there are all my tools. So as you can see, I dropped the strap through the wheel. When the hook was down there in the back, I reached down through this area down here, was able to grab the hook and pull it up and basically bring it around the roll bar. Now this is where this is where I wound up removing the side window on my soft top to give you guys a better view of how I mount it. But basically, I came up behind the rear tire here, looped it up and over the seatbelt post and then back down. Now, because I have a soft top and it happens to be a Trek top and it, it basically folds back kind of like a normal standard convertible top, I put it under this bracket so that my top can still fold back if I wanted it to. 
connected the hooks nice and easy, nothing fancy, and then just pull it down, make it nice and snug. Did the same thing over here on the other side. It looped it exactly the same way, still came underneath, nice and stug, snug. My straps are located right there on the front so that I can both get to both of them and either tighten them or loosen them if I should need to. And there we go. Hey, so there you have it, guys. 40 by 1350 in the back of a rig. One other thing I'd like to talk about. There are other companies that make um, a more solid mount for the rear of your vehicle. The problem that I have found with those is number one, they're kind of cost prohibitive, right? I mean, they're they're... If you really wanted to do it, you could afford it, right? It's not that big of a deal. It's not that astronomical with all the other money that we put into these vehicles. But with that said, it takes up all your cargo space all the time. And with a 40 by 1350 on a beadlock, I'm not gonna get a flat tire from clipping a curb leaving my neighborhood, right? The only way I'm really gonna get a flat tire is with a screw in the tire or something like that. And even then, that's such a slow leak I, I, chances are I'm gonna be able to get home and put my spare on before it's even an issue, right? So I don't need to carry around my spare, at least I don't feel like I need to, and I've never ran into an issue where I needed it when I'm not at the off-road park. Where I really want it is at the off-road park. And the fact that I can have the rear space for the grocery store and things like that, my kids throwing things in there that, that I need, going shopping, but also, Right, put the spare tire in there when I'm headed to the off-road park without having that big bracket in there and that big mounting device bolted to the floor makes it a lot easier for me. And like I mentioned earlier, securing my tools behind it while still having access to them makes a lot of sense too because now if I'm ever in a situation where I do flop my Jeep on its side or roll it over at the off-road park, my toolbox isn't rolling around in the back of the Jeep and potentially hitting me in the head, hitting one of my kids in the head, something like that and winding up really doing some real damage, right? So um, I, I don't wanna say it's the number one cause, but a huge cause of injuries in any car accident is loose cargo inside of your vehicle. Um, so strapping things down, if you're not gonna do it like this, is really smart. But again, guys, this is a 40. You saw me lift it up, I didn't struggle with it. I'm not the strongest guy in the world. As I said before, I have a female friend of mine that's about 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, she was able to lift a 40 into the back of hers on a beadlock um, with no problems at all. Um, again, be careful because you could hurt yourself, right? It is still a 40, it is still heavy. It's a car tire or a, or a Jeep tire, it's, it's heavy. Um, so use your best judgment there. I'm not telling you to go out there if you know you got back problems and, and you know lift a big tire, it, that wouldn't be smart. But just another way for you to bring your tire to the off-road park, keep it in your Jeep, keep it over your rear axle so the weight's not hanging off the back, and give yourself a better departure angle all at the same time without spending any money at all. I mean, these straps, you probably have them, right? If you're, if you're a homeowner or you're a guy that goes to the off-road park, you probably have straps. If you don't, they're very cheap. That's all you need. You need nothing else. Now, anybody that's noticed my roll cage in this Jeep, my roll bar, does not look like a typical roll bar because it's painted red. Um, that's actually just the padding that I removed off the factory roll bar. I pulled the padding and the foam off. Now, where there are some differences on this roll bar is this C-pillar support. This brace, I added that in. And obviously, if you saw my walk around video, I talked about the cage that I do have inside of the vehicle. So there are some added on pieces. But as far as, as, far as this piece over here and the crossbar at the top and the, the dome light, I actually reinstalled it with some self-tapping uh, screws. So that's even factory. So nothing about this wouldn't work in a Jeep with a factory roll bar. I mean, that's essentially what this is. Anyway, guys, stay tuned. Go give the Instagram a follow at WarPaintJKU. Lots more information over there, really cool photos, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, stay tuned, lots more videos coming.